Anupriya Goel, my maiden name, Anupriya Bansal. I was born in a conventional Banya family. Now there can be various kinds of conventional Banya family. What, what kind did my family fit into? Was it the kind who would consider me any less because of my gender? No, not at all. In fact, they were of the kind who would suggest us to become either a doctor or an engineer because we scored well in our exams. And because of my gender, I had to be a doctor. Now, as a child, I had a very creative mind. I got a lot of prizes in art competitions. I was always a part of my school's choir group. Learned Kathak for six years and hence was always a part of the welcome convocation dance on every annual day. Was a prefect in junior school, good at academics, etc, etc. But I did not like science. But how can I not like science? I scored well in my exams. I did not like formers or for heaven's sake arts. That's for students in section C and D. That's how my brain was tuned. That if you score well in your exams, you must like computers, physics, chemistry, biology, mathematics, or at the max commerce. You may not like these subjects, but you must like them. Even though I was not a natural at science, I managed to sail through with good grades because I was a hardworking student and because of constant support of my parents. And not even once it occurred to me that I should choose something else as my career option other than being a doctor because if I'm scoring well in my exams, I have to be a doctor. What else? And then starts MBBS. One of the toughest and the most daunting courses in the entire country. And during this time, I not just had to cope up with the pressure of academics, but I also had to adjust to new surroundings, which was a small village in Maharashtra, to new people around me, to new food. But the biggest challenge I had to face was to take decisions independently. During the first year of MBBS, I literally underwent a nervous breakdown. I just did not know how to manage my studies and how to cope up with the pressure. And all doctors would agree with me when I say that first year MBBS is the toughest out of all. I used to be on the phone all the time. Not with my boyfriend, but with my parents to get tips on how to manage my studies and how to cope up with the pressure. Well, as time moved on and as I interacted with more and more people from different family backgrounds, different cultural upbringings and different ethos, I realized that success should not be measured by how well you score in your exams. But confidence and happiness is actually a measure of clarity of mind, stability of mind, sense of self-belief and development of character. And hence, I decided to decide. You know, as Indians, we are so used to working hard because of so much of competition around us that it is ingrained in our mind that we must choose what is correct, no matter how difficult it is, than choose what gives us happiness or what comes naturally to us. And in life, we are always presented with so many options to choose from. We have to take so many decisions in life that taking decisions is an art. It is not something that comes overnight. It requires a lot of trust in yourself. And in those five years of MBBS, I learned a lot about myself. What gives me happiness? What I like? What comes naturally to me? What doesn't tire me in the long run? What is my passion which ignites my desire to do better and better? And what truly connects me to my soul? And what exactly is being connected to my soul for me? After the days of work, when I come back home, I close my eyes and I imagine myself to be in an empty hall with no one around me and I talk to myself. 
If my inner voice tells me, well done, then I don't need any external validation. And trust me, when I understood what is my passion and what truly connects me to my soul, that day I felt I was born. And from that day on, step by step, I created myself. So to pursue as a career, I was extremely certain that I have to do something creative. And what better option could it be other than aesthetic dermatology? Because aesthetic dermatology is a perfect combination of science and art. And as I practice the same, I look forward to going to my clinic every single day. I have the responsibility to work on people's faces and change their emotions. If a person is feeling tired on static emotions, I can work on his face and make him look relaxed. If a person is losing confidence because of genetic pattern of hair loss, I will ensure to give him a solution no matter what and ensure that he doesn't have a gloomy day because of the same reason. Now, many of you listening to me here would be thinking that, oh, she's just a doctor for skin and hair. That's not very complicated. That's rather frivolous. A real doctor is the one who saves lives in an operation theatre or in the ICU. Well, I fell for this once, not again. You know, in life, there are a lot of norms made by the society. There will always be a lot of chatter, a lot of noise and opinions of everyone, always. But amongst that noise, if you know that your everyday work is oxygen to your existence, then put your blinders on and keep marching. And as I kept marching with consistency, I feel extremely humble to tell all of you that I became a national trainer in anti-aging procedures and an international trainer in a specialized technique for hair loss, for which I was also the first doctor to introduce it in the entire North India and we completed the maximum number of procedures in the entire world in a very, very short span of time. Now, as life moves forward, I wanted to be a mother. I wanted to have children. But as the society says that once a woman has children, her career ceases. So I thought to myself, which is the next project I should take up, which connects me to my soul, and which also doesn't require me to go to my clinics every day? And I got the answer immediately that I must write a book. And that's how my journey began as an author. I was extremely fortunate that my book got accepted by Pwengin Random House to be published. I started writing the book when I was six months pregnant, and I submitted the final draft of my book when my children were just six months old. It got its online release because it was COVID on 9th of May 2021, which happened to be my children's birthday. I had twin girls and it also happened to be Mother's Day. It felt that it was a gift to my children and also an ode to motherhood. But wait a second. I just told all of you that my passion was to practice aesthetic dermatology. But just because I wanted to have children, my passion changed to writing a book. How does that work? Let me explain. You know, in my experience, as life moves forward, as time changes, as situation changes, multiple options keep opening in front of you. And amongst these options, can be opportunities for you to create a new milestone in life. All I ask from you is just be open to changes. Try them out. See if they make you happy. This may not be the 100% guaranteed success formula, but it is definitely worth a try. You know, for example, today in the world of social media, YouTube and Instagram have become such great platforms to magnify your presence and to also share your knowledge. And I still remember the first video that I shot was right opposite my house in my clinic at night with my father-in-law holding the camera in his hand which was an iPhone and he was motivating me to say that one line correctly. 
And today I have made more than 100 educational videos on YouTube and more than 600 educational videos on Instagram. And creating these videos and sharing my knowledge with my viewers is nothing less than oxygen for my existence. Today, as I stand here in front of all of you, I feel extremely blessed to share my life journey. But no life journey is complete without its ups and downs. And at this time, make sure to surround yourself with people who remind you of your true potential when you sometimes forget about it. Who are your true cheerleaders? Make sure to take blessings from your parents because they are a permanent source and they always wish good for you. And sometimes when I am hovered by clouds of self-doubt, my husband always tells me, Anupriya, there is nothing that you can't do. You can do everything you wish to. And I say these words to myself every single day to keep igniting my passion and forging towards the purpose of my life. In the end, I would just like to say, stand up, shout out, believe in yourself and have no doubt. Life is beautiful. Embrace each and every moment. Breathe it, own it and learn from the disappointments. After all, you deserve to live an extraordinary life and not be a face in the crowd. Thank you.